All right, here we are on a Sunday. It is two o'clock as I needed to make adjustments to my schedule. Um, and thusly, two o'clock, but here we are. Uh, today we are going to be working on the comb out of the Ava Gardner style. I just want to do a quick review of what was done before we start the comb out. So we are still using the uh, 10 Hollywood hairstyles. Uh, the PDF is linked in uh, previous posts. I will continue to link that for anyone that would like to follow along. So this is the style that we are aiming for and it involves stand-up curls at the top of the head and then a random assortment of pin curls through the rest of the head. Uh, all pin curls curled towards the face and the stand-up curls curled away from the part. So to show what we're doing here, we have three rows of stand-up curls all rolled away from the part. And then we have three forward facing curls and a random assortment down the back and then coming up the side and coming up the side. So that's what we have so far. We achieved this last week with a half inch barrel curling iron and clips used a little um, heat protectant as prep and then sprayed with a little bit of hairspray as a setting tool. I lost a word, don't know where it went. So the first thing we're gonna do is just take all of the single prong clips out. This is meant to be a relatively casual hairstyle. I will say, hold on. I got to get my clip bin. I will say that this hair is definitely longer than what is described for Ava Gardner in the style. Excuse me, I might sneeze. Hold on. Excuse me. Apologies. Continuing with taking clips out. I will, once I get these clips out, I will move the view down to focus on this head. So literally all I'm doing is pulling pins. Not terribly exciting. So this particular doll head was cut in a 1940s midi style. So it's extremely layered and it's a longer midi, so it actually hangs down further in the back. It has the horseshoe shaping to the back. It has shorter layers on the top. Everything is blended together and the ends are tapered, which will benefit this style is having the tapered ends. Okay. And just for comparison, I'm going to reread the section about her hair style and her haircut. So how Ava's hair is cut. The hair is parted on the right. It is taper cut three inches long on the top and on the sides in about one and a half inches long at the neck in the back. As you can see, this is about, oh, I don't know, about twice as long uh, as hers was, and definitely in the back. This is way longer than an inch and a half. So it's the idea, but not, proper execution for the sake of this is the doll head that I had chosen to utilize this style. Move the camera down so we get a little bit 
better view of the doll. And my first step in any comb out is going to be using my Denman brush. This is a seven row brush, and this is just to break up the curls and brushing them down and over my hand to encourage a nice blend, but this isn't meant to be super, super slick. This is definitely meant to be a little more casual. That's why I opted for the heat styling to show that you can do some vintage styling with a uh, if I wanted to, like this side is curling up into a really cute little curl. If I wanted to, I could aim this for a, a little more stylistic look, but uh, for this, I want to make it a little more casual. Just one second. Apologies, just needs to knock some stuff loose. Am I crooked? I hope I'm not crooked. And we're just going to continue by combing out the back. Right, it's pretty, pretty rough go here. I don't have any um, smoothers or anything in the hair yet, but once we get everything thoroughly brushed out, then I will discuss what we're doing with the styling products and how you can translate what I'm using into what, um, what you can use to keep yourself feeling, um, less greasy because she's going to end up having brilliantine and i've discussed before brilliantine is basically vaseline so now i'm going to just take the top i'm kind of brushing up and over my hand so we can encourage height but also a little bit of a blend a little bit of maybe like we can push if I really work at it like we can push a wave right in like it doesn't take it doesn't take much to once the hair is set pardon my sleeve I can take pull the hair push it and as you can see already I've made a really awesome wave here, but that's not quite the look we're going for. This this kind of starts screaming a little more 1940s when you have this really smooth line, but this shows you how relatively simple it is to take fresh set hair, comb it together, pull it, and then push it into shape. So you can see, even though that's not our goal right now, you can see that there's this really nice wave that's coming around and tucking in. If I was going for something a little more 1940s, then I would definitely keep coming back and adjusting my curls find where they want to sit, and then just pin them, spray them into place. But that's not the look we're going for today. What I want to do is take, I know it's backwards, but Tres Flores Brilliantine is a, well, it's authentic. It's been produced since at least the 1930s and other products such as different forms of brilliantine have been 
produced since the early, early 1900s. So all I'm doing is I have emulsified a small amount in my hand and I'm just kind of finger combing it through so we can get the shine, so I can get the control, but not necessarily the grease. Uh, with the doll head, since this will be here for a while, she'll definitely have this hairstyle in for some time, then it's okay for Brilliantine. If you are somebody who wants to wash your hair and restyle on a regular basis, Brilliantine is probably not for you. If you are thinking you want to get some of the shine factor without putting Vaseline in your hair, you can use a pomade, you can pick um, silicone based, water based, there's, there's many different choices depending on what your hair is used to. And then uh, if you don't want to use pomade, if you want to use something, bleh, let me start over. That started coming out weird. If you don't want to use a pomade, perhaps it feels too heavy for you, then a light hair oil, uh, the Matrix Oil Wonders, can be a really good choice. Because what we're just trying to do is create a little shine, create a little control, create a little smoothness. So as we continue working through the style, we now, instead of having... Oh, this is kind of fun to look at. Instead of having solid waves and curls, now we have kind of a, a, a mashup. I have absolutely forgotten how to speak. Uh, and if, like I said, if we wanted to do a 1940s thing, you just tuck a curl in. And there it is. This is a fairly simple comb out. We don't have to worry too much about um, fine, fine touches. This may come out to be a, a much shorter, a much shorter live stream today, uh, since this is the last part from last week. So just going to show you I'm using a nylon bristle styling brush and using this to help, especially in the case of this lovely doll, help distribute the brilliantine throughout the hair. If this was a regular person, then we might be looking more to distribute the natural oils, a little pomade, but I can't help myself. I constantly tuck into 1940s. That seems to be my my era of choice. All we're, all we're doing here is just working or knocking her head off. It's like the people that want to help you while you're trying to comb their hair. Just tip their head. Um, well, really, we're just trying to get a good distribution of the Brilliantine or whatever you're using as your shine and smoothing product. And I'm still guilty of just wanting to tuck it in and turn it into a wave, even though that is not our goal here. Let me see if I can tighten down the, just stay still. Talk to it. That that makes it work great. You talk to it, tell it what to do, where to do it, how to do it. So I'm coming in underneath. I'm kind of bringing the brush in an upward fashion underneath and then over the top to get as good of a distribution of Brilliantine and a blend out of these curls and then once everything is done then I will be 
finger combing apart. What we just combed through. And then I will also show how to create a little more of that look for um, the back. How to tuck it into something cute, turn it into a, a, a light chignon. See, I did it again. And it looks awesome, so I'm going to show you. See, doesn't that look awesome? It looks great. But it's not going to stay that way. Because that's not the, the goal today. Uh, I think besides finger, finger, I'm going to finger combing, I'm going to be using my pick comb to just pick, literally pick apart the curls and let them just kind of come into their own using pick, kind of separating things out, lifting up, letting them develop in their own way so that we're a little more casual, a little more um, a little more like what you might find yourself doing with your own hair. Bring this over across the top. But let the curls kind of fall out and do what they feel like doing. There's nothing wrong with giving a little direction, but this is definitely meant to be a little more casual. That does not want to go where I want it. So I'm just kind of adjusting as I see fit. Obviously this hair is way longer, um, but I am just going to show for comparison, we have, and I know this one's hard because it's definitely hard to make out details, but it's really just a nice bit of loose curl and wave all the way through. And then we're going to turn it around, and this is if your hair is cut in a 1940s style using a 1950s set and still using my pick comb. You can either use your fingers to, you know, use uh, to get the curls. This is one of my favorite things to do is just kind of let the curls go crazy. It'll be fine. So this is kind of a nice way to give yourself volume, give yourself, or someone else. It doesn't have to be yourself. Volume, curl wave without worrying that it's perfectly smooth because this isn't meant to be perfectly smooth. We want it to have shine. We want it to have direction. You want to see the curls, but it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because the whole idea was that it was a bit more casual. And, and my my 1940s attuned self is still freaking out. It's okay. I will be fine. It's it's just that I tend to like things with a little more structure and, you know, break out of my, my usual. Do something a little, a little different. Let these curls just run wild. So I'm going to just show. You can see her rainbow. Um, so her hair is a little, a little big. But if you, if you wanted to calm that down, all it would take is a thorough brushing to bring it down a little bit. But you can see it's just a very loose and casual, I'm going to step out of the way so we can see, loose and casual kind of style. Still has a little bit of the, just for the way that the pin curls went in, it still has a little bit of the flat crown, uh, 1940s. I just... It happens, but it's still very loose, very casual. 
not super styled. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of a different thing. You want the the look a little closer to Ava Gardner and you have hair in the back. Basically anything that was pin curled in the back is going to join this little chignon party. So I'm going to turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I turn it all the way around so you can see what I'm doing is that I am using my Denman brush and combing back through to one second realized I forgot pins. I forgot that I was going to include this part about making a chignon in the back. So we're taking everything and since it was all pin curled, we can start directing directing the curls. You can see we kind of have this little proof here. That is a technical term. I'm going to hold my hand this way and start. Your ends are very rough. You can hear it, can't you? But using my hand as a base and encouraging all of the curls to come around the hand. So now we have just a little, just a little something rolled up here. And I'm going to be using very, very large hairpins because this is a very large amount of hair, crisscrossing them, and then sending one through the top. So now we have this cute little, little chignon. I'm going to give it one more pin just for support and stability. Little chignon here, and then we're going to just take the sides and casually turn so you can see each step of what I'm doing. So we're just going to take a little bit of the side and just kind of gather it up. Obviously, if this hair was shorter, this wouldn't be an issue, but for the sake of having longer hair, then just using some hairpins. These are regular sized hairpins, just little little guys to secure the hair in where we want it to go. And we'll come to the other side. And then we'll calm down the, the top as soon as I get the stuff done. So we're going to scooch the top out of the way because I want to calm it down just a little bit so we can get a little bit closer to the, the look of what um, Ava Gardner looks a little bit closer to. So it's a little tiny bit of work, but it's only involving a few hairpins and a little rearrangement of the hair. Still gonna pull apart. I know I grabbed one from the other side. Pull apart these curls so that they can be a little more still a, a casual look. You know, something that doesn't look like you just spent forever and a day trying to put it together. And then we're going to calm down the top 
just a bit. And if you don't feel comfortable, say you're trying to do the back on your own and you don't know about like curling it up that way, you can also, when you gather it up, is to put it in a low ponytail and then arrange the curls around the ponytail. So then it can just look like a, it's a slightly different way to do the uh, chignon style. In this case, I am going to just for the sake of keeping things relatively casual, but I'm, I just, I can't help myself. I'm going to do it because I can, because I'm the one styling the hair. And then just curl a few things in places so the hair doesn't go anywhere. And thusly, we get a slightly different look. Scooch out of the way again. This time still, yeah, it's a little, it's a little big. I could flatten it out a little more if I really wanted to push it. Uh, one of the things you can do if you're looking to flatten things out is to take a duckbill clip or a, what's known as a yoyet, and place it where you want the hair to flatten down to. So then when you hairspray it, it will be set there. I'm also going to see if I can't slide a couple pins on the inside here. And sometimes seeing just a little tip of a pin is not the end of the world. I mean, I see people running around with bobby pins hanging out of their hair all the time. So having your little end of a hair pin is probably the least of your worries. And I'm going to leave those clips on there for a minute. All right, scooting out of the way so we can see a little bit, a little bit, a little bit less of uh, crazy curls everywhere kind of a look. Something that's a little bit more put together, but not really looking like you tried that hard. So, and then just a little, little hairspray. With that, I'm also going to move any of the little flyaways, because while we're still going casual, it's nice not to have hair flying away all over the place. So, there we go. A little style fixer. Let it dry for a second. And then, pull the clips off. That was fun. Just gonna, just tuck that back in. There. And now we have a finished style that didn't take a whole heck of a lot of effort. And I hope that it's been enough to see that just from a simple hair set, the most important part being the three rows of stand-up curls, everything else was just haphazardly curled forward, can get you a nice full-bodied curly hair look. And we will figure out, um, not sure what next week is going to be, but I will on Saturday post who is going to be featured, which of the 
which of the Hollywood starlets will be featured, what type of setting I'm going to be doing, whether it'll be a wet set uh, with pin curls, a wet set with rollers, or just doing another heat set. I'm probably gearing towards a wet set and then showing and I may do rollers because those can be translated into uh, say using foam rollers for yourself uh, or utilizing once more curling iron just um, then it would be a dry set versus a wet set. Uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to leave a comment, uh, ask away. If you've looked at the booklet, the 10 Hollywood hairstyles, and there's one that you particularly want to see, let me know and I can send that as my next style. Besides all of that, we finished for today, and I will catch everybody next Sunday at 2 as we continue through the Hollywood Hair series. Thanks.